Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to a brand new series of game development tutorials of how to make your own first person shooter game in Unity. This video tutorial series will guide you through everything you need to know and I'll even provide you with all the scripts and the assets for free in each video if we use any. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. And you can also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. So the game we'll be building will be taking a look at various FPS games and developing a game based on the various traits of those popular FPS games, along with the opportunity for you to develop it further with the skills you'll learn. We'll be making this game completely free and will cost you absolutely nothing other than your time and effort to follow along. So who is this tutorial series aimed for? Well, it's going to be aimed at newcomers to game development world as well as intermediate developers. I will take you from a beginner level in this very first tutorial to an intermediate level by the end of the series and possibly further depending on how far you want to take your own experience. Even if you're a veteran game developer, stick around to see just how we tackle things in this version of Unity and the methods we use to achieve the desired effect in this rather unique development series of mine. So what version of Unity will we be working in? We'll be working in version 6. But that doesn't mean to say that this will not work in other versions along the way. It will effectively work in any version from Unity 5 onwards. Some things may be labelled differently, but all of my tutorial series are built to be future-proof as well as legacy-proof. So this first tutorial will explore how to get Unity on your PC, like I have right here. We'll explore the hub, which is this, and we'll get acquainted with the engine interface itself and start building the game. So how do we get hold of Unity? Well, it's actually very, very simple. You just need to go to unity.com slash download. And right here, there is a button that says download. You click that and install the application. And that application is this. And this is the Unity Hub. What is the Unity Hub? It is a central area for you to store all of your installs as well as your game projects. As you can see, I actually have two current editor installs, which is version 6 and version 2022.3. Now, if you want to install it, you would just need to click on Installs right here. Click on Install Editor, and then you can select any version you would like. There are recommended versions, but I would absolutely recommend going with something that has long-term support. The reason for this is because Unity will basically support that version for quite some time. It's up to you whether you want to use version 6 like I will be doing in this tutorial series, or whether you want to use something a little earlier, like 2022, 2021, it's up to you. What I wouldn't really recommend too much is using anything before 2018. It's not really worth using Unity 5. It will work in Unity 5, but I wouldn't recommend using it at this point as it is almost 10 years old. Either way, what you would need to do is click on the install button and it will present you with the option and you just need to download and install. Once it's installed, you'll see something similar to this right here. That indicates that the version of Unity that you wanted installed is now installed and ready to go. Next thing you'll need to do is click on projects up here. and You can see all the projects that I currently have right now on this particular machine. Obviously, other machines may have different projects, but if you link everything together with your account, you would see various different things. To get started, we just need to click on New Project up here. And at the top, make sure you have the correct edited version. If you have multiple versions installed, select the one you wish to use. So for example, number six. And for now, I'm going to just go in standard Universal 3D because I want this to be universally working in pretty much anything. If you're more of a dedicated hardcore developer, you may want to use the HD um, pipeline, which is high definition 3D in this case. Uh, you can have the sample if you want to. This isn't going to be 2D, but you could theoretically select 2D. Uh, we have 3D mobile down here, 2D mobile. Everything you make in Unity can be ported to pretty much any device, so don't worry too much about any of these other things. For now, let's just make sure we have universal uh, 3D. Next, Name your project. It can be called anything you want. This tutorial for me is just called FPS. Select the location where you want to save it. 
And if you are online, you will just need to select your organization. If you disconnect from your internet, you will not have to select one and you can just click on create project. Obviously at the moment, my I haven't filled this out correctly, uh, but this will be highlighted and then you will click on create project. Give it a couple of minutes to build everything up and you'll be presented with something which will look very similar to this. This is the Unity Engine interface. It may look different in different versions, but fundamentally everything is pretty much the same. So what do we do here? What is all of this? How can we build a game with what we see here? Let's take a look at all of these individual windows. Here we have the hierarchy. And the hierarchy is where we can store all of our game objects. What are game objects? They are a collection of objects that we have inside the game, which all come together to build the game. For example, we have a camera, we have a light, and we have a global volume object right here. Some things may not be necessary. Some things are indeed necessary. But this is where you can select everything which is in your scene view. Speaking of which, the scene view is this right here. This is where we can visually see everything within our game. So any object, model, texture, anything that goes in the game will be right here. Any UI elements, things like that. We can see them visually in the scene view. Now we can use our mouse in the scene view to kind of look around and understand things more. We can use the left mouse button to click on things. So you can see here, I click on the camera, the light. If we hold the middle mouse button, we can move around using the mouse. And we can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if we hold the right mouse button, we can pivot on the spot. So we can easily manipulate any kind of camera movement inside the scene view. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the camera we see right here in the scene view is what is rendered in the game. What is the game? It is this. Right now, this is how our game looks through the main camera. And the camera is how we visually see our game. This isn't going to be too useful at the moment. It's only useful when we start playtesting the game inside the engine. Over here, we have the inspector panel. And the inspector panel is where we store all of the information on our game objects. And every game object will have something called components. Components are basically just little items that we have inside the inspector panel, which can determine what the object actually does. For example, we have the main camera. We have a transform component. That means it's location, position, rotation, all that kind of information. Every single game object will have to have a transform component because it requires that information to be in the game. This now has a camera component and the camera component is vital to making the camera work. For example, the directional light does not have a camera component because it's not a camera. So every game object will have different, different, different components, just depending on what it is. Down here below, we have the project window. And this is where we store all of our assets, uh, like scripts, like sound, textures, models. Everything gets stored down here in different folders that we can use. And assets can be almost anything that we would use in the game. It can even be a scene itself that can be classed as an asset. Next along, we have the console. And the console is a real good way of finding where an error could be within the game or within the script. So for example, you've written a script, there's an error, it will tell you a little bit more information about the error down here. Next panel along is animation. And this is a quick and simple way of creating easy animations inside Unity. For example, if you had a coin and wanted to rotate it, you could just use an animation to do that. Yes, you could do it different ways. You could do it in different programs. For example, if you've got a model of a character running, you wouldn't necessarily animate that in Unity. You'd do that in your 3D modeling software. So the animation component in Unity is just for vital and simple animations, but it is very, very handy. So let's go back to the project window. And what you can do is if you're unhappy with the layout, you can actually move tabs around. So let's take the game view. Let's drag it to there and disconnect it completely. So you can have this free moving, or you can attach it over here to the inspector and have it next to it. It's entirely up to you how you want to have the layout of your editor. It is however you feel most comfortable. So we've gotten used to how this all looks now and the basic functions of what we can do. How do we actually build a game using all of this? So 
Building a game from scratch, for your very first time at least, may be daunting, but there are certain things that you can do to make things seem easier, simple and more straightforward. For example, if we have a floor, we could have our character walk around on it. So let's create a floor. Let's go to game object up here. Let's go down to 3D object and you'll see all the different 3D objects that you can create. And we can manipulate these objects to be exactly how we would want them. So for example, let's insert cube into our scene. Now over here, remember where I said it was a transform component that had to be in every single game object. Well, if we look at the position of this one, it's given some really weird numbers. Yours may do this, it may not. However, if we set this to zero, 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 it then moves that game object to the dead center of our seam. And obviously we can use these arrows right here if we hold the left mouse button to move up and down, left and right, and back and forth. And we can place this anywhere in our scene. And you will see over here that the position is indeed changing. We can hold control and press Z to undo and set it back to its original position. And then we can change the scale here. So we want this to be a floor that we can have our first person walk around on. So let's change the scale to be quite large. Let's change this to 20. We'll keep it one on the Y and we'll change it by 20 on the Z. So now we can see that we have more of a floor going on here. It's not too thick, but it's not too thin. But if you wanted to change it, you could make it a very, very thick object. So we could zoom out. This could still technically be our floor, but it's just a big, massive cube right now. Let's set it back to one. We can also double click over here and it will focus on whatever object you've double clicked on. If we were to do it on the main camera, it would switch to the main camera. Same with the light. So we can easily change things whatever we have, even if we have a cube all the way over here, if we were to double click here in the hierarchy, the scene view would instantly take us to where that would be. So let's rename this cube now to floor. So right click on it on the hierarchy, click on rename and call it floor. Nice and simple. So what else can we do? Well, there is a million things that we can do. We've covered the basics at this point. Yes, we have a cube, and if we click on the game view, we can see the cube here. It may not look like it, but we can indeed see the cube just here. So next tutorial, what we will do is we will really dive deeper into this. We're going to actually create a basic level area for our first person to walk around it, and that requires adding some more game objects to the game. There are different ways of creating levels, but we're going for the basic simple type first so we can get our game working as soon as possible. But we're going to make it look a bit more like a level. So we're going to add some textures and materials to make it look better than just a plain cube. So remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, and you can stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I will see you in the next one.